This month on Connections. Our travels around Chicagoland begin on Michigan Avenue at the Tribune Tower, where the newly opened Freedom Museum is our first stop. As we head south on the number 151 bus, we'll take you to one of the summer's big attractions, the CTA Loop Tour Train. Then we head to the Blue Line, where we meet one of the CTA's star employees and step on board to check out the latest service enhancements for the west side and western suburbs. Next, we'll take the number 21 Cermak bus, heading back east to South Halstead Street, an up-and-coming neighborhood close to the UIC campus. From there, it's just a short hop to the red line to see how easy it is to travel from U.S. Cellular to Wrigley Field for baseball's Crosstown Series. Finally, we'll take the number 47 bus to visit the Hyde Park Arts Center's brand new building, conveniently located near several stops on the CTA. What better way to get around to all the sites this summer than on board the CTA? Hi, I'm Dale Rivera. Welcome to Connections, where you can learn all about using the CTA in and around Chicago. One of the newest attractions on the city's magnificent mile can be found in one of the oldest and most historic buildings here on Michigan Avenue. The McCormick Tribune Freedom Museum is our first stop. The word freedom may take on added meaning once you've been to newly opened McCormick Tribune Freedom Museum. The museum, located in the landmark Tribune Tower on Michigan Avenue, takes a close look at the freedoms we enjoy as Americans each day. We focus specifically on the First Amendment and really look at other freedoms sort of through that lens. And it's our fear and concern that if people take these for granted, they may be lost and people may not even know they're lost and then they won't be around for future generations. And they've certainly been hard won in many cases. Upon entering the Freedom Museum, you can't help but notice the two-story suspended timeline sculpture titled 1215-1791, which refers to December 15, 1791, the date the Bill of Rights was ratified and the First Amendment went into effect. Throughout the museum, exhibits are interactive, which allows visitors to hear people's opinions on freedom, voice their own, and even vote on Supreme Court cases. You can select and listen to one or more of the five seminal cases on the five freedoms of the First Amendment, speech, press, religion, petition, and assembly. And then we encourage people to vote. And as soon as you hit your vote, you get a real-time tally of how visitors before you voted. And then we compare that also to the way the Supreme Court voted in those cases. While the Freedom Museum appeals to adults of all ages, it was set up to keep middle and high school students interested and thinking about freedom. We knew that we had to be interactive, we knew that we had to be visually stimulating, we had to be contemporary and current because we didn't want to be a history museum that just focused on, albeit important, documents and concepts, but really applied those in a way that kids could understand and appreciate their importance and their value. Parents and teachers appreciate what the museum has to offer teens. I think it's, it's terrific. It really brought up a lot of stuff for my 13-year-old. It's very interesting. I think the interaction helps them to understand it a little better, puts, a, uh, puts kind of a today's face on it. The Freedom Museum is the first of its kind in the U.S. dedicated to helping people understand and value their freedoms. So we can get visitors to be thinking about that when they leave. We feel confident that they'll stay engaged, they'll be good citizens, and we'll all be better off for it. To learn more about the Freedom Museum, log on to www.freedommuseum.us or call 312-222-4860. Of course, a visit to the Freedom Museum can begin on the CTA. Here's how. So take in a visit to the Freedom Museum and let your journey begin on the CTA.
Summer is a great time to explore the city, and the CTA is the perfect way to take in the sights, particularly in the Loop, where you can get a close-up view of Chicago architecture that you won't get anywhere else. Just step on board. You are riding on Chicago's historic Loop. For a perspective on Chicago unlike any other, ride the rails of the Loop Tour Train. This 40-minute trip around downtown's historic loop offers a unique vantage point for taking in the city's renowned architecture and history. You'll learn a little bit about Chicago's architecture. They really get a, a chance to see up close and personal how the different buildings have changed over the 130 years that we've been building here. Thanks to a partnership between the Chicago Office of Tourism, the Chicago Architecture Foundation, and the CTA, the Loop Tour Train runs four times every Saturday throughout the summer. And the best part, it's free. The adventure begins at the Chicago Cultural Center. On Saturdays, starting at 10 a.m. at the Chicago Cultural Center at 77 East Randolph, visitors can come and pick up their tickets, so the tickets are available on the day of the tour, first come, first served and uh, then they'll get their ticket and they'll get directed over to the first stop for the train, which is at the Randolph and Wabash Elevated Walmart. train station. Volunteer docents like Ken Monroe from the Chicago Architecture Foundation provide interesting and educational commentary. You'll notice the large center pane of glass and a double hung window on either side. Again, kind of a stylized Chicago window. The tour circles the inner loop three times above Wabash, Van Buren, Wells, and Lake Streets. But you don't have to be a tourist to enjoy it. In fact, Chicagoans are encouraged to hop aboard. For locals, I think that when you're familiar with something, you almost don't see it. So the loop tour train is a great way for them to really zone in on different uh, features and buildings that they probably just kind of take for granted because they're just kind of always there. Chicago is known internationally for its architecture, which is why Chicagoans may find themselves sitting alongside visitors to our city, like this couple from Alexandria, Virginia. We learned about the architecture, about the designers that made this city. Also, I have to say we saw things that you can't see when you're walking. When you're taking a walking tour, you're looking at either details at the very base level or looking all the way at the top. And usually just above this, the first floor, the real architectural details still exist in the building, so you get a chance to see the architecture and you get to see it up close. The Loop Tour Train runs every Saturday at 11 a.m., 11.40 a.m., 12.20 p.m., and 1 p.m. through September 30th. For more information, call 312-744-2400 or log on to www.cityofchicago.org forward slash exploring Chicago. The price is right and the, the feeling is great. And it just gives you an insight depth to this city. Whether you use it to get to work or play, public transportation is the way to go. The CTA strives to provide service that is on time, clean, safe and friendly, thanks to helpful staff members who are there to help you keep your travel plans on track. Need help with a fare card or where to transfer to another CTA train? Don't know who to ask? CTA customer assistants are there to help make your travel on the CTA a smooth ride. A lot of people may have questions about how much the fare is, how to get from point A to point B, and I just try to break it down as easily as possible. Robert Kempfe has been assisting Blue Line customers for more than 10 years. That includes handling everything from special needs to the usual questions and the occasional crisis. I left my backpack on the train. We had gone over to the red line. I realized I didn't have it. We ran back and there was Robert and I told him what happened and he, um, he took care of it. I was able to notify our control center to have the operators check their trains and it was actually turned into another customer assistant so we're able to reunite them with their personal items. It made me feel pretty good, I mean you always hate to hear about somebody losing or forgetting something. Talk about a job well done. It's easy to see why for the second year in a row 
Robert has taken home first prize in the customer assistant category of the CTA's annual rodeo. It's a competition where customer assistants are judged and scored on the tasks they perform every day on the job. There's a lot of competition. You got quite a few employees now that are looking after him and saying they're going to take his throne from him at this time. He's won two times in a row. He can't do it third time. I'm going to learn a lot from you and I'm going to beat you this year. It's no wonder competition is fierce. Robert is already looking forward to next year. I just wish everybody the best of luck and may the best person win. But at least one customer thinks Robert already has. I think he's fantastic. Maybe I can nominate him for next year. <laughs>
This summer, it's also time for the CTA and its customers to think pink. The new Pink Line service starts June 25th. Here's a look at how the new Pink Line will work. Pink Line trains will operate from 54th Cermak, making all stops along the line to Polk Street Station, where trains will travel across the Paulina Connector to share the tracks with Green Line trains at Ashland and Clinton stations. The Pink Line will continue to the loop and travel on the elevated tracks along with Green and Orange Line trains, stopping at all elevated loop stations. Then travel back to Clinton and Ashland, back across the Paulina Connector to Polk Station, then travel west back to 54th Cermak. The 54th Cermak Blue Line will continue to operate during morning and evening rush hours. It will operate from the 54th Cermak Station in Cicero and connect with the Forest Park branch of the Blue Line along the Eisenhower Expressway and continue into the loop via the Dearborn Street Subway. During rush hours, customers along the branch will experience increased service and have the option of either the Pink Line or the 54th Cermak Blue Line. In addition, service on the Blue Line's Forest Park branch will increase. The Pink Line got its name after nearly 600 students from kindergarten to eighth grade nominated colors to name the new line, along with essays explaining their choice and how transit service was important to their communities. The author of the winning essay receives a $1,000 U.S. savings bond and the chance to be one of the first to ride the new Pink Line. So join the CTA as it tests out the new, improved West Side and West Suburban service. Hopefully they will find that the service we provide does really fill our mission linking people with jobs and communities. For further information, log on to www.transitchicago.com, email ctahelp at transitchicago.com, or call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. The number 21 Cermak bus will take us east toward Halstead, in a neighborhood that blends the old and the new. Just transfer to the number 8 Halstead Street bus, head north a few blocks to the Roosevelt stop, and step right into University Village, our destination. A journey on the number 8 Halstead bus can take you to one of the up-and-coming neighborhoods in Chicago, University Village. Step off the number 8 at Halstead and Roosevelt, and you're in the heart of University Village, a 58-acre community named for its proximity to the University of Illinois at Chicago campus. The area boasts 800 residences for UIC students, with an additional 750 dorms in the new Stuckel Towers, which is currently under construction. The dorms blend with a collection of new housing, including historic lofts, condos, and townhomes. Tree-lined streets and open green space add a real neighborhood feel. A centerpiece of the community is University Marketplace, hosting a number of shops and restaurants that are bringing in the crowds. One place you can meet the locals and take in the scene is a new restaurant on Maxwell Street, Hash Browns. Bring a big appetite when you sit down at Hash Browns. They're cooking up standard breakfast fare, but with a twist. Be sure to try their house specialty, which keeps customers coming back for more. The hash browns, the hash browns. I've tried to replicate them at home. I've come close, but I haven't really hit it yet. So I'm still trying, but uh, that's definitely a reason to come back. Hash browns hash browns are made with sweet potatoes or white potatoes. And if you like your spuds, you can even order an entire plate of them. Hash Brown's customers are also coming through the door for the omelets, which are all about Chicago. A favorite is the Maxwell Street omelet. What's in it alone explains Maxwell Street, you know? The Polish, grilled onions, and the pork chop. That explains it all here. Anyone that comes here loves it. They really do. So once I get you in the door, you'll be back. You'll inquire a taste for one of my omelets. Everything is fresh, nothing's frozen. With a full belly, you might be looking for some place to relax, and a short walk will take you to Barbara's Bookstore. Barbara's is a Chicago original that first opened in Old Town in 1963. It's now an expanding chain with its flagship store that opened in University Village in 2004. 
Still, what makes Barber's unique is the books you'll find at the store. It's not a cookie-cutter corporate store. Uh, we, we cater to very literary-minded people. We carry all the same mainstream books that you might find in some of the other bigger stores, but we also carry a lot of what I would consider middle-tier publishers, uh, books that you don't find in your typical bookstore. Barber's takes a very personal approach when it comes to book selling. The staff are book lovers themselves, and you can find out their thoughts on certain books by reading their handwritten recommendations. Everybody in the store has their own genre that they really pay attention to, so you usually find in all of our bookstores someone that has an idea about all of the different topics. Barbara's has pulled in some big names in literature over the years, including President Bill Clinton. And if you're looking for a signed copy of a book from a visiting author, Barbara's may have it, as signed copies are also sold in the store. If you not only want a recommendation on a good book, but also on a good bottle of wine, step a few doors down from Barbara's to Lush Wine and Spirits. This new wine store specializes in boutique wines from around the world. We focus on the very small and artisanal boutique wineries, and so that way you always get a new product that you've never seen before, heard of before, and we just celebrate diversity. Whether you're a connoisseur or new to the world of wine, Lush will help you find a bottle that's just right. And you can taste many of the wines before you buy. Chianti is a little bit dusty, a little darker, mm -hmm. but they can taste new labels, they can taste new grapes, new regions, and it's just a really great um, educational opportunity for a lot of people who want to know just a little bit more about wine. You never walk out of here disappointed because you know that you like what you bought. Bottles of wine at Lush range from $8 to 180 so whether you prefer red or white or something in between, there's something for the wine connoisseur in you. So step on board the number eight Halstead bus and head to University Village, where you can enjoy a big breakfast, a good book, and a unique glass of wine while you explore one of Chicago's hottest new neighborhoods. Boarding the Red Line, a popular route this time of year for baseball fans, especially those heading to the Crosstown Series. It provides a direct link between our town's two major league ballparks and is one more way the CTA is keeping its customers on the move. As the Sox and Cubs battle it out in the Crosstown Series, the CTA is once again celebrating our hometown teams. Twice during the baseball season, the American League Chicago White Sox and the National League Chicago Cubs face off in a three-game series, one series in White Sox territory and the other on the Cubs' home turf for bragging rights as to which Chicago team is the winning crosstown rival. This is the ninth year that the CTA has handed out its commemorative poster to baseball fans before each of the crosstown series games. One loves the Sox and one loves the Cubs. And they share a room together, so it's the perfect poster for them. Since the red line is one thing the Sox and Cubs have in common, that's where the posters can be found. They were handed out at 35th Street Station for the U.S. Cellular Games, and next they'll be at Addison Station during the Wrigley Games on June 30th and July 1st and 2nd. The posters are available starting about 90 minutes before a game. The CTA is also producing commemorative fare cards in the same style of the poster. The Crosstown Series posters and fair cards are designed by Chicago artist Steve Musgrave. Whenever I'm doing a poster, especially these posters, I picture some kid hanging it up on their wall, so I figure that's part of their surrounding, so it's like their personal public art. The poster making process begins with Steve creating a number of sketches. He follows the style of illustrator Otis Shepard, who designed the program covers for the Cubs in the 40s and 50s. He was just a genius and did a lot of work in real simple shapes and nice simple gradations, nice airbrush stuff. And I always think about him when I'm doing these pieces. Steve provides the CTA with a number of sketches to choose from, and each year the design is changed according to the series games. Whoever is on top of the poster or mentioned first is the team whose park the first games are played. 
This year it's the White Sox because they start at US Cellular. Last year it was the Cubs, they started at Wrigley. So that's nice. It changes every year, so it's not favoritism. You may have recognized Steve's work. He also has his own gallery of sorts in Addison Station, which he adopted in 1998 as part of the CTA's Adopt-A-Station program. Addison Station is where you can see Steve's mural-like paintings depicting Cubs legends like Ryan Sandberg and Ernie Banks in action. People go through the station really fast, you know, in and out, and I figured they wouldn't be staring at these things. It's a very quick read. They're bright colors, simple images, and very direct. So if you're a baseball fan, be sure to pick up a poster to take home. And while the poster is a great souvenir, it's also a reminder that the red line can take you right to Wrigley and U.S. Cellular Fields. It's the easiest thing in the world that we have the red line connecting literally both ballparks. You can go from Wrigley Field to Cellular Field on one continuous train ride. But for people who are coming from other areas of the city and just going to one of the ballparks, we have all of our train lines and many bus routes that connect people to those destinations. You can avoid expensive parking fees and traffic congestion by taking the CTA. On game days, there's extra bus and train service to accommodate heavier crowds. Here's a look at how the CTA can take you to both ballparks. So be sure to take the CTA to Crosstown Games and pick up a commemorative poster along the way. Whether by rail or bus, the CTA provides a link between Chicago's many neighborhoods as well as 40 suburbs. It's a great way to explore local treasures like the Hyde Park Art Center, our last stop. The doors have opened at the new home of the Hyde Park Art Center. Grab your art supplies and head down to the center's new location at 5020 South Cornell in Hyde Park. Inside the new facility, you'll find art classes for children and adults in ceramics, painting, drawing, and even digital art. The 32,000 square foot building offers a lot of space for art classes, exhibitions, and discussions and it will allow the Hyde Park Art Center to serve the community in a big way. Hyde Park Art Center was founded in 1939 by a group that really wanted to create a new kind of institution that would be much more connected with community, be much more accessible, but at the same time was showing contemporary art. And so they formed the Hyde Park Art Center and the center has really stayed true to that mission ever since in all of its 67 years. The Hyde Park Art Center offers classes daily from morning until late in the evening. So stop by and explore the artist in you. We'll tell you more about the Hyde Park Art Center next month as we begin another journey around Chicagoland on the CTA. I'm Dale Rivera. See you in July on Connections. For more information about the CTA or to use the RTA's trip planner, visit our website at www.transitchicago.com or for customer service matters, call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. For travel information, call the RTA at 836-7000 from anywhere in the Chicago area.